So developing sales targets can be you know, one of the hardest things to do when it comes to, to planning your business. You're trying to predict the future, you're trying to get your crystal ball out and give it a rub and see what it spits out. While there's no sure way to be able to predict what the future is going to hold, there's a methodology that I use that can sort of give you a, a tangible feel on the realist, you know, the reality of or the likelihood of your, uh, your sales target being, being realistic or not. So I'm going to walk you through a short model and now depending on your business, it depends on how this is going to apply. It may not be a direct correlation, you might have to sort of take in context what I've said, manipulate it a little bit and, and make it work for yourself. But you'll get the theme and the gist of what I'm talking about. So the first part is to understand, you know, BAU stands for business as usual. If nothing else changed in your business in the next year, and I'm going to use a, a year as a time frame to look for your sales targets, if you did the same things this year as you did last year, what could you possibly expect to happen? That's the first number you need to take a look at. Now, you can't immediately just say, well, we're going to make the same amount of sales. You need to look at your customer base and say, you know, are we losing customers? Are we doing anything more in marketing? Is there anything that's changed in the marketplace that could influence uh, what our sales are going to be? If we don't change anything, we just keep doing the same thing next year. Then you've got to look at, okay, so where can we get new sales from? And there's really two areas to get new sales. There is selling stuff, selling more stuff to your existing customers, or there is getting new customers. They're basically the two places to look. Now let's take a look at some numbers to put some context to all this. So in this example, I've said that, look, last year you did a million dollars in, uh, in revenue in sales, and let's say that this year you want to do increase by 50%, nice healthy increase, right, to, to 1.5 million. So the first thing we've got to look at is, what is that business as usual projection? And I've broken this into two areas. You know, what's on the books right now? That would mean what uh, if you've got any existing contracts in place, if you've got any uh, really predictable sales trends, like there's a customer that always buys this amount from you every year, it's pretty much in the bag, un you know, aside from any really unforeseen uh, events. So you've got an on the books number, and then again, a business as usual projection. This is sort of looking at you know, all things being equal, if we do the same things next year as we've done this year, what could we expect to happen? So I've said in this example that business as usual, including on the books and you know, a bit of a projection, it's going to be about 1.1 million. And some of the reasons might be, well, you know, I was talking to Bill at XYZ Company and they said they're ramping up, they're going to need more stuff. And Jim's almost landed that new client. Like, we've got some good momentum here. I think we're going to do a bit better anyway. So we're going to go for a 10% increase with business as usual. So if our goal was 1.5 million, that leaves us with a gap of 400,000. So now we're going to say, where's that 400,000 going to come from? So two areas I said that you can get new sales from, either from existing customers or from new customers. So what if we said, listen, I think we can get an extra 100,000 out of our existing customers. I know our top three companies that don't buy these three products for us. We just got to get in the door there, make a couple of pitches, and I'm sure we'll be able to increase our sales. That might be one area that you think you can get some sales in. So 100,000 from existing customers, that would leave us with 300,000 that we need to get from brand new customers. So now we're going to say, okay, well, how many customers do we need to be able to generate $300,000 in sales? Well, that's where we look at our average customer spend for a year. So if we go back over the last year or the last couple of years and we look at uh, our revenue and divide that by our number of customers, that's going to tell us on average how much a customer spends with us each year. So now this is a big assumption, right? Because that's saying that any customer that we bring on is going to spend the average amount. Well, we all know that some customers spend this much, some customers spend this much. But we've got to start somewhere. So if we say the average customer spend for this company was $30,000, we know we need to make up 300, so that means we need 10 new customers. At least now, we've got a target to go after. Okay, team? We're going to bring 10 on average of 10 customers of average size, right? That gives us something to get our head around and something a little more tangible than just we need another $300,000 in new sales. So then we take it one step further. We say, because we've been tracking very accurately our conversion rate, that is all the opportunities that we get to uh, for a new customer buy from us, how many actually buy? Well, let's say in this case it was 25%. 
Meaning this company, out of every four inquiries that would come from new customers, they would win one of those. And I think it's important to measure those things independent of new inquiries versus inquiries from existing customers, because quite often they're quite different conversion rates. So if our conversion rate is 25% and we need 10 new customers, we divide 10 by 25% gives us 40 leads. We know that in the next year we've got to generate 40 new leads. Now we've got to be a little bit careful with that too because we've said the average customer spend is $30,000. That's $30,000 over a year. So you've got to look and see for your customers is does that happen a little bit you know, throughout the year in little chunks? Or is it one order that comes in, you've got people that just buy from you once a year? You know, what are the trends around that? Because if you've got a customer that buys from you, say, each month, and on, you know, that adds up to about 30 grand on average, well then if you get, out of your 10 new customers, if you get nine of them in the last month of the year, well they're not going to spend $30,000 each. So you've really got to, you know, spread it out and say, okay, if we're going to get, if we need this 300,000 to come all over the year, Maybe we need to double this number. Maybe it's going to be 20 new customers because we're going to get some at the beginning of the year in January. We're going to get some at the end of the year in December. So we're only going to get on average half the spend out of these people than what we would normally get. So it would really cut your 30,000 down to 15. Right, because if you get a customer at the end of the year, they're not going to spend nearly as much as someone that you get at the beginning of the year. So that would make our number of customers 20, which would make our number of leads 80. So I'm not saying this is the case for your business, but just understand those variables so you can make realistic uh, projections. Because you might then look and go, generate 80 leads? We generated 20 leads all of last year. How are we going to generate 80? Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. That just now goes to your marketing plan. But at least it now gives you a number to sort of get some realistic plans around. The next step around that is Okay, we understand how many leads we have to generate. We're then going to look at, okay, what are the activities? What are the activities that we do to generate leads? And this is getting into creating some of your critical drivers. If we can then break out what the activities are that generate leads for you, we can then start to develop some benchmarks around what quantity of those activities have to happen and by when. If you've got a sales team in place, there's nothing more powerful in perhaps knowing your top five activities that generate leads and knowing how much of it should happen over what time frame. For example, let's say you know that networking always brings in some leads. Networking. So you might say, you know what, our sales team needs to be going to at least three networking meetings a month. Three per month. And you might say, you know what, we don't do a real good job of getting referrals. So what if we ask for what if we ask for a referral every week? Okay? Referral, one per week. And on you go at looking, what are the key marketing activities that bring business in for you? Develop some benchmarks around it, and then you can measure that you know, proactively throughout the year. And you can start to see if the activities you're doing that you're measuring are leading to the results that you're expecting. If they are, great, let's keep going. If they're not, well, let's stop and, and fine tune. But the whole benefit here is that you're really clear on what you think you need to be doing so that as you go, you can see early on in the picture if you're going to get towards your goal or not. It's not getting towards you know, the last quarter of the year and realizing, you know what, we've still got $300,000 to make up. What's going on? You're very proactive in knowing what you should or shouldn't be doing. And, uh, and off you go. So in doing this, as I mentioned at the start, it is a bit of a guess, right? Trying to forecast the future. What is important is that you start somewhere and put some, some numbers in place and have discussions regularly around it so you can start to get a feel for what is working. And in future years, the more you do this, the more predictable you'll be around it and the easier it will become. So with that, run your numbers and uh, see what you come up with. Have fun with it. <laughs>